How are you? It used to be a really simple question to answer. It would be the thing that started every conversation you had with anyone. Hi, how are you? And the answer would come very quickly. It would be something like, fine, thanks. How are you? We didn't need to put any thought into it. That's just, that's how we are. We're fine. I've noticed recently, whenever I've said to someone, how are you? There's a pause. We have to stop and think. And the answer will go something like this. It'll be, well, I don't know, like, I'm okay. Um, you know, like, this week's been okay. I've had, like, some good days. Yeah, there's nothing the matter, but, like, I'm just not quite myself. Or I'm feeling a bit lethargic. I don't have much energy. I don't quite know what it is. I can't quite put my, th my finger on it. I think we're all feeling like we're coming out of something and we've all been through this global trauma like we've all been through this same process and it's had a different effect on each of us some of course have felt it much more strongly people you know who have really majorly struggled or who have lost people but even if you haven't even if you had a good lockdown your family are all well and healthy, you're okay, your kids are okay. It's had some kind of effect on all of us. We're all not feeling at our peak of mental health. We're like, we're not sure how we're feeling and we can't quite put our finger on it and we don't quite know what to do about it. This week's Edra, Bahar Bechokosai, the Pasuk says, When your brother, your friend, your neighbour is struggling, what should you do about it? You have to hold him up. It literally means hold him up. And Rashi explains, it means don't wait until he's literally collapsed. Don't wait until he's gone bankrupt. Don't wait until he's had a nervous breakdown. You need to get in there before that point. You need to prop him up so that he doesn't completely collapse. And if you look around you, you'll find there's plenty of people who need help. It could be financial, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual, it could be practical. You know, they might be struggling with their workload or their housework or their kids. There's all sorts of ways that we can reach out to people and help them in areas that they're just struggling in because they're just not quite feeling themselves. I had a week last week where, again, nothing happened, it was fine. I can't put my finger on it. I just wasn't feeling great. And I decided I literally had a spare 20 minutes between finishing what I was doing at home and going to pick my kids up. And I went to Brent Cross for literally 20 minutes. And I walked into Rituals, which is one of my favourite shops, probably my favourite shop. I hadn't been there for ages. I hadn't been to Brent Cross for about probably six months. And I walked in and normally, you know, you're quite cautious. You don't make eye contact with the salesperson because you don't want to be harassed. And, you know, if they ever offer you anything, you just say, no, 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 I just came in for this one thing. So I went straight in, I marched right over to the thing that I had come to get and I went over to pay. And then this lady said to me, would you like um, a little extra something with that? If you just spend three pounds more, then you can also get this free gift. And I just said, yeah, why not? So then we went looking around the shop for some more things to to boost my order to pass the three pound mark. And obviously I ended up spending much more than that because you said, would you like this? And I said, yes. And she said, would you like this? And I said, you know what? Yes. I literally said yes to everything she offered me, which I would never normally do. And I just walked out of there smiling. I just felt like, yeah, I'm having like a good day. I'm just pampering myself. Why not? And then I walked to Waterstones and I spent another few minutes in there. <clears throat> and I picked up a few books and I walked out with three new books. It was Erev Shabbos and that Shabbos I spent, I don't know how long it took, but I spent a good deal of time just by myself reading a book from cover to cover, which I haven't done probably in well over a year. And I love reading and I just haven't made any time for it. And I felt so much better just because I'd taken the time out to do something for me. And I think we all just need that. It's not going to be the same thing for everyone. You might not like rituals. You might not like reading. But I think we all need to, you know, before we prop up other people, also prop ourselves up because we don't want to be on the point of collapse either. And then when you're feeling good and you've had a good week, 
then you can start looking around and thinking, you know, who else can I reach out to? Who else have I noticed struggling? They might not have asked for help. They might not have verbalized that they need help. But if you think about it, you know, you know who's not looking amazing, who looks like they're not quite themselves, or who hesitates when you say to them, how are you? So have a think, look around, see who you can help out. The hechas up to boo. You should prop them up before they get to the point of collapse. Have a very good week, a healthy week, mentally healthy week, and have a good Shabbos.